Very good morning to all of you from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Welcome to the second week of the DHIS2 Analytics Tools Academy from Colombo, uh, conducted by His Sri Lanka in collaboration with the University of Oslo and supported by His India. So I assume that all of you had a great weekend um, and enjoyed uh, uh, your, your normal life without the trouble of DHIS2 uh, over the last two days. But uh, this week, of course, is going to be a kind of a hectic week because uh, we have a uh, few exercises coming and we'll be covering a few more tools and we have the um, comprehensive exercise coming towards the end of the week. And then uh, over the next weekend, of course, uh, you will have to prepare for the examination that we are planning to have exactly in seven days. Right. So just to uh, recap what we have done during the last uh, one week, uh, we started off explaining uh, the objectives of this uh, DHS2 Analytics Academy, and then we demonstrated all the features uh, that we'll be covering during the course of the academy. And then uh, we started off uh, explaining how the, the design of DHS2 affects uh, the analysis, and we showed you how to customize the metadata in the brief. And then we also uh, started uh, explaining to you uh, about a few major features, analytic tools in DHS2, such as uh, the validation rules. And followed by validation rules, of course, uh, we mentioned to you uh, briefly about the WHO data quality application and um, how to use data quality in your day-to-day -day practice in general. So that's, of course, a supplementary uh, tool in analysis in DHS2. And then um, we mentioned to you about the pivot table uh, as the main, uh, the, the first core DHIS2 analytic tools uh, on Friday. So during this week, we hope to cover uh, the data visualizer, which is of course a major component of uh, analysis in DHIS2, because nowadays, as uh, Priyanka mentioned towards the data part of his uh, presentation, the pivot table is also within the data visualizer. So that will be covered uh, today, and then followed by that uh, maps tomorrow, and then we have uh, another supplementary tool which is coming up on uh, Wednesday, which is the scorecard. And then we will, uh, on Thursday, we will look at uh, interpretation and then the dashboard. On Friday, it will be the comprehensive exercise where you will have to do the exercises individually. So that is uh, why I really emphasize that uh, you have to uh, you know, go through uh, whatever we have done so far by Thursday because on Friday you will have to do the comprehensive exercise within the day and submit uh, by the end of the day on Friday. And uh, with that, uh, we'll be concluding the major components of DHIS2 analytic, analytic tools uh, within the week. And then uh, on Monday, we will have the, ex uh, the final examination. And also we will discuss briefly about uh, the implementation considerations. So that's the plan. Um, for this week. And uh, today, of course, uh, it'll, you will see a new face because uh, our one of our teammates, who's of course currently not uh, residing in Sri Lanka, will be conducting uh, the session for the entire day. Of course, it, it is a bit too early for him. Uh, good morning, Pravil. Are you there? Fine. Right. So, uh, Pravil will take it over from today and he will do the entire session on data visualizer. And we, of course, will be supporting him uh, by staying online. And of course, uh, so Pramil, you can start while I enjoy my cup of tea, the Ceylon tea today morning because it's 10 a.m. I can nicely enjoy a cup of tea while you're presenting. So Pramil, over to you. All right. Hope you can see my screen now. Yes, we can. Right. Uh, so we'll be doing the data visualizer component today, which is one of the uh, three main analytic components in DHIS2, that is the pivot table, data visualizer, and uh, the map. So the pivot table we have already covered last week, and uh, most of the things in the pivot table, the basics apply to all three modules. So the, this uh, work is easy for me. So I'll mainly focus on what are the things specific to the data visualizer, while going back to the basics, which Priyanka also did on uh, last week. So tomorrow you will be doing the maps. So data visualizer is the app which is 
used to com uh, compose map, uh, charts in DHIS2. So pivot table, you did tables and uh, data visualizer is for the charts and tomorrow the maps is for GIS maps. So this is our session plan. Uh, a little bit different from the timetable you got. The, it's a heavy schedule, so I have broken it up to eight parts, small eight parts, but don't worry, I'll be giving breaks in between and I'll try to go slow and uh, keep everyone at the same pace. But if I'm, if anyone thinks they can't catch up or if anyone thinks I'm too fast, please uh, tell me, you can uh, raise your hand or tell in the Slack or anywhere so that I'll get the message and I'll try to repeat or I'll try to go fast. So these eight components we are planning to cover today. And uh, in between these components, I'll give you a small break uh, to practice what we have taught and uh, maybe to have a coffee or a tea or something. Um, so the presentation, there will be a small presentation going together with the demos. So I'll be working on the analytics instance of the DHIS2, which you already are familiar. So you might choose to follow me there with the activities or you might choose to listen to the presentation, see what is being done and then do it later during the break. It's up to you to uh, choose whatever method you like. Uh, but we'll try to be more interactive because I might again fall asleep. Right. So before going into the contents, last week you described uh, the pivot tables and when and why to use a table. So Priyanka mentioned some specific instances where the pivot tables are useful. But uh, so I'm going to ask you the same question. Why, what are the instances that you would choose a chart ahead of a table? And uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages? Anybody who like to contribute, go ahead and try something. If there are it's a limited number of data, unlike in uh, paper tables where you used to show a lot of data, you can use charts when there is limited number of data and to give a better visualization so that people will get it just as they see it without going through the numbers and figures. So it's very easy to show somebody a trend or a data, what is happening in a, using a chart and specifically in dashboards, you, load, you can use a lot of charts, right? Finally, I got some answers. So back to basics. So. And, data dimensions, the three W's. We yeah, forget uh, the, the what, when, and where dimensions. We are not considering the who dimension here because we are using aggregate data here. So when you are analyzing data using any of the modules, that is pivot table, the data visualizer, or the map, you must make sure that you choose all three of these components to select, to analyze data properly. So please keep that in mind, just a refreshing point that make sure you have, you have correctly selected all three of these dimensions when analyzing. So back to data visualizer. So there is a new app in data visualizer. Earlier we had a different interface, which was like the pivot table we did, but now they have a different data visualizer app, more improved, more user-friendly app. So we can't see the old app now. So we have to use the new data visualizer in newer versions. And uh, as the pivot table, it's a dynamic data analysis. So you can choose whatever you want in the dimensions and generate the table on the go. So you can create graphs and charts using the three W's, that is data. So under data, you get data elements, indicators, the data sets with the data set reporting rate and times. And then you have event data items if you are using tracker and uh, you can use program indicators if they are configured. And uh, you have to combine them with the correct period and the orchid to get the proper chart. 
So we'll start with opening a chart and then looking at the interface. So the part one will be basically how to open a favorite. That is, we are using this HIV cascade favorite. And then uh, we'll see what is what other things in the interface and how to choose how to alter the dimensions and about the layout. So we are going, I will be going to the demo now. I hope you can see the screen. So the app is located in the app menu. And uh, the data visualizer app with the green chart. And you click that, you go to the data visualizer app interface. So I will first open the favorite and then describe the uh, components of this data visualizer app. So you can see a menu called file here. And when you click that, you go to open and you can uh, choose what, what the favorite you want to open. So I will open the HIV cascade file, cascade chart. The, the screen is not visible. You're working on the demo, but we'll seeing it. You can't see the screen? Yeah, Sorry. you can see the screen, but you, when you say, when you open the file, it's not visible. Probably your screen is visible. Yeah. Uh, you can see now. Yeah, we, we can see. I think now he is referring to uh, some, ah, some sort of demonstration. Yeah. And you can see the demonstration now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, now we can see. All right. Okay. <laughs> so so uh, when you go to file, I'll repeat it. So you can see the visualizer app by then. So when you go to file and click open this uh, dialog box comes where you select this favorite which is being which was saved by somebody else in the system earlier so there are many favorites here i think there are about 243 so there are the charts and tables all come here so i'll select the hiv cascade i can uh, refine by typing a part of the name if i know so here on the top, you can see HIV, HIV cascade. So I'm going to click that and this favorite, the HIV cascade favorite will open. So now we will go through the components, the parts of this app using this HIV cascade chart. So on the top left hand corner, you can see uh, a drop down to choose the chart type. Here, there, you, here you can see uh, 12, I think, yeah, 12 chart types. And the pivot table, as Priyanka mentioned, the pivot table will also be shifted to this app. And the maps, the GIS component will also be here in future. So you can see 12 types of charts you can create in this DHIS2. For example, columns, bars, pie charts, line charts. We will go through most of these chart types during the lesson and how to create and how to edit and those things in this app, in these chart types in the coming few hours. So first part is selecting the chart type. Then below that, the dimension selection, the 3W selection, data, period, and organic selection options are on the left side. I think uh, you must be already familiar with this. So when you click the data component, another dialog box will come where you can choose the what part. We will go through these things when we are creating a chart. Then the when part and the where part. And below that, we have the other defined dimensions. So let's move on to the right side. You get the update button, which is used to update the chart, which is visible here. When you change certain things, 
like the dimension types, dimensions, or options, or anything. When you change, you can use this update button to update and see the outcome. Next to that is the file menu. In the file menu, you can open a new chart. You can open an existing chart. You can save a favorite. That is when you change certain favorites, you can overwrite and save it. Or when you create a new favorite, you can save it. Or there's an option to save as, where you can save it in a different name. Then there's an option to rename. Then there's an option to translate or you can share and you can get a link to the chart or you can delete the favorite. Next, we have the options button where you can do certain things to change the look of the chart. We will go through the options later in the day. And there is an option to download. We'll go through that option also later. And uh, below these three menus, you get a different area. This area is for the layout. Earlier in the previous modules, previous versions of data visualizer, the layout was in the menu, but now the layout is already in a different component like this. Where you can drag and drop and do it easily. And below that is the chart area where you get the chart you have defined. And on the right hand corner, you get the interpretations related to this chart. Here you can do your own interpretations or you can um, see what others have told about this chart. Right, so that is the interface of the data visualizer app. So these things we covered in the data visualizer interface. How to select, we have to select the chart type, the dimensions, the file menu, chart options, the download menu, the interpretations panel, and the chart area. So let's go about onto the dimensions part and the layout of the chart. We'll think about the same chart. There is this chart, the HIV cascade, which we just opened. Now I want somebody to describe what is shown in this HIV cascade chart. Any volunteers? Just what is what is what are the data? What is the data displayed? Then you can use the three W's to describe it. There are three data elements. Okay. So what's the HIV test positive, HIV people living with HIV new on ART, and people living with retained on ART the last 12 months. Okay. So the data is the period is for the say it's last 12 months and the org unit is uh, user org unit. Right. Very good. So if you can go to this, if you put your mouse over this uh, in the layout component where you get the series, you can see it says user org unit. And if you put a mouse over, you can see the last two or 12 months. And if you put over the category, category that is the data, you can see what are the data elements or indicators that are shown in the chart. So as you mentioned, it's a, the chart is a HIV cascade and uh, there are three data. We don't know whether these are elements or indicators yet. There are three data items and uh, the org unit is the user of need in this case, which is the training land. You can see that here on the bottom and the period is last 12 months. So let's say the chart is now last 12 months, but I want the chart to be last three months. So I'm going to change the period to last three months. 
I can do that in two places. One place is on the left side where you get to select the dimensions. You get the period here. Or in the layout component, the chart is currently in the filter. And if I click that, you get the period selection. So again, when you select the period, like in the pivot table, you get relative periods and fixed periods. I hope you can remember what those two are. I'm not going to ask again if uh, anybody has any queries about fixed periods and relatives, you can type in the Slack or then we can explain further, right? So I'm going to select last three months here. So there is already last 12 months selected. So you have to remove that. And last three months is already here under relative periods. So I'm going to select that and click it. So it will come to the selected side. If you want a fixed period, then you have to select this part. So I can either hide it and do any other changes and update later or I can update it straight away. I'm going to update this now and see what happens. You can see if you have noticed the numbers earlier that the numbers have reduced now because it's last three months. Similarly, you can select, you can change any of the three dimensions you want in the chart. Let's say, going back to my presentation, Right, I'll explain about the filter here. So in this chart layout, you can see three things. One is called the series, one is called the category, and one is called the filter. So as you can see, the period is under the filter component. If you can remember the pivot tables, Similar thing was there, the filter component. But these two components, the category and the series were not there. Instead, the pivot tables had rows and columns. But when it comes to charts, you don't get rows and columns, you get series and categories. We'll explain this, what the series and category and filter is now. We'll start with the filter. This component is actually the easiest to understand. Filter part, you can't, you don't see in the chart actually, but it will define what the chart data is. So it is a kind of restriction applied to the chart. So in this case, it says last three months, so that data is filtered into the last three months. But you can't see months here in the chart area, but it's in the filter here as last three months. So if you want data to be one year, you have to change the filter and make it one year. So that is the filter component. But if someone wants the monthly data, to be shown in the map, sorry, in the graph, that is each month separately. What is the step we should take? Can anyone take a guess? I will show that somebody wants this chart for their presentation. So that you can see the three months data in separate columns. Can anyone guess the next step you have to do? You can move the periods into the category. Yes, exactly. Outside. So if you want the period in our chart, you have to move it either to the series or the category. We will see to which component and what happens in each of these components. So you can't have it in the filter if you want to see in the chart. So that is the point you have to remember
so we will try first uh, then move, we'll move it into the series so you can see when you move it into the series automatically the arc units which were in the series will move on to the filter because in one component there will be on only one dimension so now the series is the period category is the data and filter is the arc unit let's see what will happen to the chart i'm going to update this now as you mentioned now you can see the three periods in the chart so you can see hiv positive uh, number for three months in the charts that is may june and july same in the other two data elements or indicators you can see the three months separately now because we have put the period component into the series but uh, let's say somebody again wants to see what happens within each month so in this case let's say may 2020 how is the hiv cascade happening that is how many positive how many new vulnerability and how many retained on the last 12 months so that it will be easy to have all three data elements of the months together in this chart it's difficult to appreciate what is happening in one month because the one month data is in three places in another words this chart, the data is grouped by the data element or the indicator. So that other person is looking for a chart like this. Yeah, May 2020, you get the three data together so that you can see what is happening within that month like this so we have to change the layout of the chart so what we are going to do is we are going to change the series and category we are going to interchange it so that we put the series to the category the period to the category and data in the series and then we can update it and we get the chart we want so in data in charts it's important to identify the correct component for the series and correct component of the category so to see what type of chart you want what is the layout of your chart so this part is actually the most important component in data visualizer it's a little confusing to understand this series and category component but when you work with the charts a little you will be very familiar with it and it will be very easy for you to guess the series and category so in simple words if you see the category now if you go to the category the period component is in the category now if you go to the chart and see you can see that the period component is used to group or categorize the data so in simple words category is categorizing data that is grouping data so here data is grouped into periods and if you go to the series it has data that is the three indicators and if you go to the chart and see how the series are displayed you can see there are three series here 
the series part you can identify from this legend the HIV positive which is the green series you can see them like this so it's a kind of series which are reoccurring in the categories so one series is green one series is blue and the other one is red so it's kind of repeating thing a series a repeating like just imagine like a uh, tele television series where you get episodes every week likewise you get one component in the first group one component in the second group that is the category one component in the third group so that is how the categories and series are shown in charts so there are some definitions you can uh, refer if you want to identify what are the categories and series so category is usually on the x-axis like in the chart which i showed because y-axis usually is the number of uh, the value of the data and in the category is usually on the x-axis in these types of charts but it differs when you rotate the chart like a bar chart it will be on the other side but still it will be on the x-axis so it determines how we group or categorize the series together so according to the categories the data is grouped and series determines what is displayed within each category so within each category there will be a component of the series and the filter is where the data is selected from that is easy so in our chart as i mentioned the data was in the category series the period was in the categories where data was grouped and the organic is in the filter so if you i'll show you another chart this is just to explain you further how many series and categories are there in this chart anyone three categories and uh, four series yes very good so we have three categories here and in each category we have the value for four series that is in four colors so this category and series how they are displayed in charts will differ from the type of chart so we, we are going into different types of charts we will see how they are displayed but just keep in mind the basics behind it so you can work it out so uh, any questions about series and categories because uh, this part is i think the most important one and if you have the basic idea of it you can work it out any questions so can i move right so i can i think move so in data visualizer app this is a an, an analytic cap like the p uh, pivot table and the maps so you can play with this you if even if you drag and put it in wrong places nothing will happen to the system right so you can play with it try it and change it and see what happens so even if you make a mistake the data won't be changed so you can learn by practicing right next we'll go next we learn how to save the chart so in dhis2 there are things called favorites 
that is to save the chart or any other visualization or a pivot table or a map and you can easily use them in the dashboard once they are shared saved as favorites we'll do the dashboards later this week so now we will learn how to save it and use it in the future so the option is in the file menu now we have already opened a favorite that is hiv hiv cascade but since i have changed certain things in the chart it shows as edited hope you can see this it shows as edited so i can save this chart as in a different name please don't overwrite the same chart don't use the save option you can use the save as option because if you say or oh, say click save it will override the existing one so i'm going to click save as and it will ask for a name so when you are practicing in the system make sure you use your initials to re put the names to re uh, in the names favorite names so that you can easily find them later and uh, even during the exercises the graded assignments and everything it's easy for the instructors to identify who has done this so if you want good marks make sure you use your initials or it will be specified in the assignment what to use as the name so i will rename this i will save this visualization using my initials i'll put it at the end so i'll put it in the front then we cascade and save now you can see the name of the chart is changed with my initials and if you go to open and uh, type cascade you can see the original one and the one i have saved so if anybody else is saving please use your own initials so that it won't replace this one right so that is saving next we will go to see how to create a new chart so we will be creating you will be creating a lot of charts when you go back to your workstations you, you have to know how to create a chart so what is the chart we are going to create so we are going to move to tb now which is my favorite so we will be creating a new chart on tb notification rates so some person any person who is familiar with the tb program can explain how the tb is reported in your organization or your country so that everybody will know what we are working with any volunteers familiar with the tb reporting so tb cases are usually reported quarterly that is a global standard so each country will report quarterly the tb cases they have the number of cases they have and also the outcome so there are two basic reports the case tb case finding report and the tb case outcome reports which are used which are produced quarterly so this that's a, like a global standard given by who and apart from that there will be many other reports but we will focus on the case finding that is the tb case notification which is done quarterly so as uh, mentioned there are types of tb they are categorized as new and relapse and uh, pulmonary and there is another component called extra pulmonary which we are not considering for our chart now and there is another classification called bacteriologically confirmed and clinically diagnosed so i have chosen four indicators the tb case notification rates for all forms the new and relapse notification rate the bacteriologically confirmed pulmonary rate and pulmonary clinically diagnosed rate so 
we want to put these rates in a chart which are reported quarterly so what would be the best type of chart to show this case notification trend you can recall the type of charts if you want we have a bar charts we have a uh, stack charts we have column charts pie charts line charts so what is the best visualization to see a trend in notification line charts line charts yes so in line charts you can see how the notification changes over time easily so one when a person looks at the line chart it's easy to interpret so any other answers different to that or everybody agrees that we should do a line chart for this anybody objecting can raise the hand it's actually not a mandatory you can do a different type of chart if you want we can use a column chart and uh, get the lines there yes that will be more detailed and uh, there are many advantages and disadvantages line chart would be clear if you show only the trends but if somebody really wants the numbers and different types in a stack in a column chart you can use that also so that is a possibility so for the exercise we will use a line chart so we are going to create this tb notification rate chart step by step in our system so what we are going to do is we have to select the chart type first that is a line then the data item which are the four indicators i mentioned then the period whether it's fixed or relative for our chart we will select quarters of 2017 to 2019 so there will be four quarters each year and for three years there will be 12 so we have to make sure that there are 12 periods in our chart and the org unit we will choose training land and uh, if you want to change the layout you can change and then click update so that this that is the those are the steps in creating the line chart so we will go to the demo and see whether we can see, create this chart right. so go to file and click new as expected next step would be you go by the left side top you select the chart type the default is column so you select a line chart and then you select the three dimensions the data period and the organic so i'm going to select the data first in when you select data you get this dialog box you will first get the data type then the group and the list of data items and on the right you get the selected data items so our notification rate is an indicator because you don't enter rates in system rates are calculated in the system so it should be an indicator so i know definitely it's an indicator so the group should be db if it's configured correctly i'm going to click db there's a, another group called db case notification which might be a more refined one but for the moment i'll say db i can filter notification if i click notification i can see only four indicators so i'm going to check whether those are the four which i want tb notification rate all cases all forms which is an indicator i want then new and relapse yes then new and relapse pulmonary bacteriological confirm then in new and relapse pulmonary clinically diagnosed so i'm going to select all these four 
and put them onto the right side. Right. So he can double check now whether the four indicators, the four rates are correct. I think they are. So I'm not going to click update at the moment because I have not selected the other two dimensions. So I'm going to hide this and go to my period. So my period is three quarters from 2017 to 2019. I cannot do that using relative periods because it's a fixed period. So I'm going to go to fixed periods and then choose quarterly. I'll start with 2017. So I can see the four quarters of 2017. I'm going to read, get rid of the last 12 months part, which is by default. And select all quarters of 2017. Unfortunately, we don't have the select all button here, which was there in the early versions. I don't know why they don't have it. So you have to select all four. You can either click control and select or select with shift or select one by one and then put them in 18 i'm going to do the same and for 19 the same now i have the 12 quarters selected one thing you have to make sure is that they are in the right order let's say you by mistake put this selected this later so the january march 2017 will be in a different position so what will happen to the chart it will not show the trend properly so in the chart this order will be used in the axis so i'm going to put that back and check the order if i want and now i'm going to hide again then i'm going to the last w that is the org unit so it's training line by default. I'm going to hide it. So now I have selected the data, the period, and the object. Next thing I have to do is check the layout. Whether the three components are in the correct place. The series, category, and the filter filter the org unit I should be correct because you don't need to show the org unit in the chart data it will be a filter in this type of chart in the chart I want because I if I want data according to org units like district wise then I will put filter into the chart but this is training land data so I'm putting it into a filter series and category now it's the most important thing so in my line chart currently i have selected the period in the category and data in the series i if i say i don't know how it should work i can just update and see whether the chart i want is coming in this layout i will click update and you can see the line chart which shows data as the series and the categories periods as the category so is this the chart i wanted let's check i'm going to the x-axis now i can see that data is grouped according to the periods the quarters i hope everyone can see this this january to march is a category where you get to see each data say january to march you get the data values so period is a category where 
four values of the series are shown. Similarly, if you go to April and June, April to June, you can see the four values. So can you see how data is grouped here? The category similarly comes to the y-axis and the series in a line chart will go as this a value under each category. Let's try switching this. I'm going to put series, the period into series and data into category. This is just to check how the layout of the chart will change. I'm going to click update. This is what will happen if you put the period in the series component. You get 12 lines here for the 12 series, 12 quarters, and they will be grouped according to the data, the four indicators. Is this meaningful? No. This trend actually doesn't make any sense. Anyway, the TB number of total cases should be the highest, then the new and relapse, then the pulmonary, usually bacterial confirmed is higher than clinically diagnosed in most of the countries. So this is not a very good chart. We wanted to show the trends and this is the chart we want. So you can play with the layout and see how things change with the categories and series. So it was different in a column chart. Now it's different in a line chart. Now we will take a small break, maybe five minute break. So you can practice how to open a favorite, change dimensions, change layouts, then uh, how to save and how to create column bar and line charts. Already one hour is gone, I think. So we will, I went a little slow because it's the start. I think I can go a little faster in the next sessions. So you can uh, practice for five minutes, take a small tea or coffee break, and then come back in five minutes. Is that okay?